The Mayo Clinic is leading a national coordination of plasma donation from recovered coronavirus patients for possible therapeutic treatment. And joining us right now to talk more about that is Mayo Clinic CEO Gianrico Ferrugia. Um, it's great to see you, doctor. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me back on the program to talk about convalescent plasma. Mayo Clinic's leadership in this Ooh. initiative is really based on our, uh, our need to collaborate with other healthcare organizations to come up with new treatments, figure ways to prevent COVID-19, and then quell hotspots when they occur. And convalescent plasma has the potential to do all three. Let's talk a little bit more about that uh, convalescent blood transfusion. We, we, we heard this from Bobby Kotick. He mentioned it on our program a few days ago earlier this week. I spoke with him at, at length about it afterwards, and he talked about how amazing it is. Can you explain exactly how it works, how, how that system works, and what you're seeing? Sure. So when any of us are exposed to a bacteria or a virus, we develop little proteins in our blood called immunoglobulins or antibodies. And they're there to fight the disease, sometimes successfully, often successfully, but not always. Now, these tend to develop for COVID-19 about day eight after infection. They're highest in our blood about a, for about a month after we've recovered from COVID-19. So if one, a, a person has recovered, donates plasma, which is the part of the blood that does not have blood cells in it, but has these antibodies, then that plasma can be used and given to a person who is actively infected to help that person fight the COVID-19 virus. And how successful is it at this point? What, what are you saying? I, I have heard stories, and again, anecdotal, uh, not broad studies of these things. I've heard stories of patients who were very, very sick in the hospital who were much better less than a week later, days after receiving transfusions like this. What have you seen at Mayo? Well, let's start by saying it, it, we are in the beginning of uh, trying to understand how well this works. This is not a new therapy. It's been around since at least 1918, has been used several times, often with success, not always. This particular initiative came from a collaboration with Arturo Casadeval and Johns Hopkins, many others. Um, Mike, Dr. Mike Joyner, Dr. Scott Wright is re leading it at Mayo Clinic. There are now 1,300 sites across all 50 states and including in Puerto Rico. Uh, we, it, uh, ab it, about 200 patients have received it. Anecdotally, as you said, there have been some really encouraging results, results of patients who have been on a ventilator who were able to be extubated the next day. But like anything we do at Mayo Clinic, we need the scientific rigor behind those initial anecdotes. Therefore, we'll be soon looking at the first 200 cases and then continue to analyze to make sure that we actually subject this initiative to the same rigor as any other medication or, or pharma, pharmacological agent. Um, Jean, we, we, we spoke a little bit ago to Meg Terrell, and she pointed out one of the, the limiting factors with this might be trying to get plasma from people who have had this disease and recovered, uh, that A, there aren't that many people who know it, and, and, and B, we haven't had wider testing to try and find out exactly who's had it and who maybe had a milder case of it. What are you seeing in terms of the amount of plasma you're able to get versus the need? So there is a website that people can go to and sign up for it because we do want to get as many people as possible. There's also a pharma that has become involved in this, creating a version of it called hyperimmune globulin, Takeda leading the way there. Um, so there, are, there will be different ways of getting to it, but you're absolutely right. And that's where serological testing does come in. Uh, we introduced our serological test a few weeks ago, and part of the reason for that was to be able to tell who has been exposed, because those who have been exposed, even if they did not know it, um, could still have a high level of antibody in their blood and therefore would be perfect candidates to donate to. So where does this process stand at the moment? How, how many patients has this been tried on? How many places are they, they running either trials or just testing it on, on some of their sicker patients? So it's growing every day. It's still run. Um, um, by us working with all the blood banks, with the Red Cross, with many other healthcare organizations. As I mentioned, there are about 1,300 sites that are um, involved. 200 patients have received it. I think it's getting closer to 300 now. And there are about 900 patients who have been signed up to receive it, uh, but not all of them have received it yet. Uh, we expect to see it grow um, exponentially over the next weeks as more information gets out about it, as we begin to understand 
how to use it. And we're really learning that while initially we thought that perhaps it's best to give it to the very, very sick, we're now learning that there may be an opportunity to give it at a point where we can prevent people from getting admitted to the ICU, saving precious beds and ventilators, and now beginning to think of other ways of using it, including could you use it to prevent somebody from actually getting hospitalized in the first place. Once there's enough hmm. supply of it, and if it works, you can also think of ways you can give it to patients who are at high risk and healthcare workers.